that. So when I had Anthony on, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're one of your co-hosts of the Rad mm -hmm. Dude Cast. I was talking to him about uh, one of my first festivals, which was the DC Comedy Festival. Oh, you, <laughs> oh man. Yeah. And okay. I opened for Anthony I would, of, of, with a litany of other comics on that, on a show that he was headlining and that you both were in town for because you were supposed to be doing the podcast there. Yes. And it was a disaster. Like the show started two hours late and there was a show that wasn't with the festival before that yeah. show. And they had just tried to keep the audience there uh, after. To, and they were like, yeah. they're like, hey, as you're paying your tabs, there's a free show after with the DC Comedy Festival. Okay, your first comic is Colin Chamberlain. And uh, it was horrible. It was, I remember thinking like, oh, this is so cool. I'm going to DC to do comedy. And then like a couple hours later, I was like, oh, I think this is fake. Like I think. <laughs> so what was your experience with that? So we did, you know, and part of me is like just a part of me that's like, oh, I don't want to talk shit. I'm just going to tell you what happened. And that's not yeah. talking shit. It's, it's, it's talking about history. And those guys mm -hmm. were nice and God bless them. They were trying. But man, they were, they were like, hey, come to, hey, have the rad dude. We'd love to have the rad dude cast do the fucking DZ County Festival. And we were like, yeah, that'd be cool, right? Yeah. So we prep. And the thing I remember is being like, we weren't getting a lot of responses on messages and everything was a little weird, but our best friend lives in DC. Anthony and I went to high school together. So like we had a best friend who lived there. So we were like, Hey, no matter what happens, we're just hanging out with taco, our friend taco. We're just, maybe we'll do a comedy show. Maybe we won't. We have no idea what's happening. So we're supposed to do the live, the rad dude cast live an hour before it's scheduled to uh, happen. I see the guy posting on Facebook. Does anyone have any recording equipment? Does anyone have any way to do a podcast? And I just show Anthony my phone. I'm like, dude, I don't know how this is going to, I don't know how this is going to go. Um, we get there. And I just remember being like, things were moved. It wasn't in a venue that was a venue. It was like, a, it was like we're standing next to people. And it's like, yeah, just talk to the people who are next to you. That's comedy. It was like wildly, uh, it was uh, really crazy. And then at the end, I'd never seen Anthony get like this before. The guy goes, um, we're like, all right, man, you need to pay us now. And he was like, yeah, so we're going to like figure out how to do that. And we were like, we're not leaving until you pay us. You will pay us right now. Like it was like, I'd, Anthony got very Italian and they, they kind of like, no, I don't think they were doing it on purpose, but I don't know that they were realizing that it was like, no, man, you need to pay us right now. This is, yeah. this is not a thing that we're just going to let this slide. And then he paid us and it was fine and whatever. And it, the guy was a maniac, but it was like, I don't know. Part of me is like, good for you for being like, you took a big ass swing with the DC comedy festival. And it was, you didn't really, you woke up that morning, like, all right, let's do this festival time to start right. planning. You know, it, it, was, it wild. was, it was like they, they, like you said, it was like they woke up that morning and go, Oh, right. We got the festival this weekend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's we today. Get on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. I mean, and it's so funny where you go, you said it like, I don't think they had any bad intentions, Yeah. but some people just don't know. Like, right. you don't know that you have to have the money ready to pay your comedians <laughs> yeah. sometimes until you have had a comedian be like, give me my money, you know? <laughs> so that was, that was the good... exact vibe of the thing of, of them. Sorry. No, no, no. I, you really, you probably have saved a lot of other comics by demanding your money where those people, maybe they would have not learned that until later on down the road. Because you deal with a lot of shitty people in this business, but they weren't shitty. They were just people who I, it felt like they were just people who were being like, we're really going to try. Like, it was like if I was like, I'm going to open up a pet veterinary today. And then it was like, yeah. wait a minute, I got to get, I got to get a building code. Like, you just have this idea of like, yeah, you get a, you get a doctor, you get fixed the pets. But it was like, they knew nothing about really what was how to do this. And so they were really, they were really trying and they were winging it. And they were very nice. So I felt bad being, uh, I, I feel bad like being shitty about it. But I was like, we had to tell them like, no, you need to put a stage here now. And you need to give me a microphone. Somebody recorded the podcast who was in the crowd, like with an iPhone. It was wild. It was, wi it oh was wild. God. Oh but, yeah, my God. But, so when, when you have something like that, you know, where it's sort of, you're in a no win situation Mm -hmm. what do you think goes through your head is it just like 
is it to take control where you go, all right, we need a stage, we need an microphone. Do you sort of get combative? Like how, how do you handle that as a comic? So it depends. If I'm in the position where someone is doing something shitty to me, I will, uh, it's my job for, in my, in my opinion, the crowd is either there to see me or I need to give them my best show. So I will just take control and I will say, no, these tables need to be moved. This microphone needs to be on. We are doing this, 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 this way. Cause I just know how to do it. And like, so this is what we are doing. If I am in the situation where it's like, oh, this is going to be bad and I'm going to bomb. I, I just do the rule of, well, I'm, bom I'm bombing on my terms. That was like a comedy rule. I learned very, I would say in the middle of my comedy career was like, oh, I'm not going to press. If this crowd sucks or this is bad, it's like, well, then I'm going out on my terms. Uh, you bomb enough times doing material like for them and then you bomb anyway. And it's like, well, what the fuck? Not only did I bomb, but I sold myself out for you, right? It's like you're in like Long Island or something. And you're like, hey, what's up with Italians or some shit? Like you try to like meet them halfway with the material and then you bomb anyway because they can read it. They're like, well, this guy's a fucking fraud. So my whole thing was, well, if I'm bombing, I'm bombing on my terms in these people's fucking, you know, I'm going to like, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to do what I want to do. So at least I have a good time, right? So right. that's the move is, is for me is always like, just, this is when I'm on, when I'm on stage, this is my stage. This is my show. This isn't your club. You rented me. I, you paid me for a thing. So when I am on stage, this is my club and you get what I am giving you. And I do not give a fuck. And I'm going out on my terms. That's what I try to do. You know, a lot of times, sure, you fucking, we all are, you know, we all fucking cower and do weird shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, but, that's the best where you, uh, you look at an audience and you go, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to stoop to their level where you see what's working or something. You go, I'm yep. doing my thing. And then like after two jokes, you're like, so any guy, this, this guy <laughs> with the plaid shirt is gay. And I isn't yeah. gay. <laughs> like the crowd's yeah. eating it up. And you're like, oh my God, I've completely sold myself out. Uh, you yeah. Know. I will tweak midway through a set life. I'm like, okay, they're not going for like the atheist shit. Like this is clearly like, I will be like, all right, well, I won't lean into that, but I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to fucking pander to these fucking animals anymore because they, who are they? Who do you right. think you are? You're going to tell me what's funny. You came to pay someone to be funny. I don't cook. So I go to restaurants. So you know what I mean? You aren't funny. So you come to me like, fuck that. And like a lot of people have a good sense of humor, but like, I'm the one in control. I will dictate what we get as the show you do not dictate and if you want to have a bad time guess what you paid to have a bad time you know what i mean like right i, I i'm sorry i like, this is like a thing i'm like very like passionate about is it like you have to lean in a little bit as an audience member to be accepting of whatever this art is right if i go to a movie i try to like the movie i don't right. walk into a movie and be like i'm gonna hate this it's like no i try to enjoy your life so i just am very much like fuck it what? you know i'm gonna Meet, you know, you're not meeting me halfway, then buff on Google. What, <laughs> what do you think that is, though, about, you, you know, you mentioned you don't cook, you go to a restaurant. Like, what is it about sort of the creative works that people will go pay money to experience them? Is mm -hmm. it because they feel like they have paid money that they now are allowed to have an opinion on it? Is that, do you think that's what it is where, where even if you go to a restaurant, they'll go, I think this is bad and I think we should tell somebody or, right. and right. I don't like this show, I'm going to heckle or this musician sucks. I'm going to get up and walk out when everybody else is sitting down. Like, what is it about sort of uh, the creative world that people think that they can sort of chime in like that? So I do think they're allowed to have an opinion, you know, for sure. Right. Like sure. you're allowed to think I'm not good. Uh, I right. think it's silly of you to think I'm not good and then continue to stay there. Or like, I mean, you know, you give someone like, you know, if it's like, that's eh, whatever, or like, uh, like you're allowed to not like it and have an opinion, I, I guess. But I, I guess my argument is that like, don't go in with this feeling of like, Oh, I'm funnier than this guy before you've seen them because then you're not going to enjoy it. Like, Hey, look, maybe you are funnier than me. But you didn't do the job to get on stage. You didn't do the, I had this guy, sorry, this might be a little bit of a lateral, but I, I almost got into a fist fight on my last show. Um, I didn't almost, but I was very furious and I, I had to walk away. Uh, this guy comes up to me 
At the end of the show, they go, yo, there's the guy, you know? And I thought they were Rad Dude Cast fans. And because they, you know, so like, so I walk over and the guy was like, it's progressed from the guy starting to be like, you were funny into, I, I knew who this guy was and you get them a lot. Is there guys who think they can do comedy or want to do comedy? So A, they want to prove something or B, they're just whatever. So he literally says like the fucking craziest shit, which is I could do that. Uh, and I'm like, look, maybe you can do it, but you can't do it today. You need to put about 10 years into this to get that good, A. B, and then he was like, then he was like, yeah, because you just go up. The, he goes, there were parts where people weren't laughing. And uh, his friends were sitting on him. They're like, yeah, it's called the setup, man. Those were setups yeah. to punchlines, right? Yeah, and then that'd he, be crazy if they were just laughing nonstop. They'd <laughs> yeah. a room full of insane people. And it was like, I had a great, like, I would tell you, but I had like a great set. But this guy... And I knew what was happening at first was that he was, he wanted to talk to me so he could learn about comedy, but he was such a like aggressive bro -y dickhead. So I did start talking to him at first and I was like, look, man, if you want to do comedy, this is what you need to do. You need to like, um, you know, you know, come up with a set and then go on stage and just continually do it and hone the craft, listen to this. You're, and, but then he just kept being shittier and shittier and being like, I'm better than you. I'm funnier. And then I was like, man, fuck you. All right. Like now you've become a drunk asshole. And you literally, and like, I'm not, not saying much about myself, but I am a guy who's been doing, I've been doing comedy for about 18 to 20 years. And I believe in myself. I'm good at this job. Not a lot of people get to sit with someone and who will sit and talk to you about comedy, you know, as a crowd member. Right. And I was taking this time to do this with him. And then he just got shitty. And then, um, anyway, I ended up just being like, his friends were all like, man, they were like, you know, like, just think of what a Patriots fan looks like. You know, like, right. not like, I mean, these guys were like, hey, you fucking Boston Patriots, you know, psycho. They're screaming at their friends. He's screaming at me. I ended up just like, i being like, you know what, man? Fuck you. I'm out. I said, here's the, I said, and uh, I put a, I put a, he followed me on Instagram. I, I put a uh, note in my calendar in 10 years with his name. So in 10 years, because he kept telling me he could be a comedy, blah, blah, blah. He could do it, blah, blah, blah. So I put his name in his Instagram. I saved his Instagram. In 10 years, I'm going to message him and be like, what happened? You said you were great. You said you could do this. I gave you 10 years to be great at this. And you're still a nobody. So this is the, well, I just hope I have an Apple phone in 10 years. I was like, this is the long right. con in my cow to follow up with this guy who was a complete asshole. I blocked him on Instagram, but I will unblock him in 10 years and be like, hey, remember me? We met. You said you could do this. I gave you 10 years. What are you doing now? And <laughs> the, the craziest thing is if in like five years, you're like, who's in Kevin Hart's new movie? Yeah. And then it's that, <laughs> like, you gotta be kidding me. You you're know, right. Uh, but I'll say this though. If, if that happens, I'm 99% sure he would have learned a little bit of humi humility and at least understood the business. And it's like, that's a forgivable thing to be a drunk and be an asshole right now. He was a complete right. fucking asshole. So like, if he gets to that point, maybe, but it's not. I mean, the chances of making this business are slim. And two, the chances of making this business as a complete fucking asshole like that is going to be zero. But I will yeah. follow up in 10 years. Man, that is going to be great for you. <laughs> uh, God. I would love to do that. I would love to see people from shows that I hated. Like, you know, there are audience members who are like, man, I wish all the bad things on you, you know? Right. And it's like, we, I was just in Raleigh. Uh, I was, it was the weekend of the election and I was in mm -hmm. Raleigh and the guy is in the front row with his girlfriend and they're both drunk and they're talking through everybody's set and everybody says something to them. And then the, the you know, the staff comes over and they leave uh yeah. but he comes back after the show and he goes i want i want to fight the comics and they're like man the you comics and he's he all of us he wanted to fight yeah. the mc yeah, the feature good. and the headliner at, at once and uh mm -hmm. and he's like trying to get in to the green room and they they're like we're gonna call security and what is it is it because like comedy is so special where it's like you actually get to when you're leaving the show you're walking out with the people that were on you know on the show like if you're an audience member is it because you're that close to them like i can't imagine anybody goes to see you know a movie and they're like man i would love to track brad pitt down and fight yeah. him you know? well 
I have a argue. I have to argue that um, if I ever meet Ryan Johnson, who did Last Jedi, I'm going to fight him uh, as a okay. star. He ruined Luke Skywalker for me, and it's very personal. Just, just kidding. But poor him. I kind of hate. Uh, I am a diehard Star Wars fan, and I well, it's crazy. The only movie I ever hated. Popping uh, in right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch, Ryan! I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Knives Out was great, but it's no excuse. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. What was your question about? You, you were saying so, about. Uh, so what is it like? What is it that in comedy? Is it because basically you're so close to the people that were performing that you're sometimes leaving the the venue with them, where mm-hmm. they were walking out of the same doors? Is that what makes people think that like they can just approach you and sit, act that way? You know. Well, well, they're hammered a lot of times. The people who and the art of comedy is this fake thing of making them think you're having a real conversation. So by the end of the show, you've fakely connected with them. So they think now you're connected. So now they're like, oh, we're friends. I connected with this guy. I I like him. I love everything he says. I can tell him about his act and what'll make him funnier. I had some ideas. They don't realize that, A, the ideas they have are like level one ideas. You know, they're they're not going to be as good. Two, if there was a joke that didn't work, it was either because I fucked up or because it's a new joke and that's not how they work. They don't get any of that. Um, the, f- the fighting thing, I think, a lot of it comes from the fact that for, um, it's an alpha thing, right? For 45 minutes, you were the alpha in the room. And now that guy's going, no, I'm the alpha. I'm going to beat him up and prove that I'm the alpha again, you know? Right. And it's like, well, yeah, you'll be the alpha in fighting, but I'm still the alpha in comedy. Like, this isn't like, what are we doing? We aren't, you know, we aren't hunting right now. You don't need right. to prove to be the leader of the pack. But yeah, guys will a lot of times do that. They'll just think they're like, they get like, it's like, it's like I was hitting on their girlfriend by just, you know, being the funniest guy in the room for a while. And it's, right. Uh, it's such a, it's such a challenge to someone's uh, uh, authority, you know, ego. Yeah. But I don't yeah. know if they do that to Pearl Jam, you know, I don't know if right. they go up to Pearl Jam, like I got to fuck this guy up and prove that I'm the fucking tough guy because I think it's that connection thing. There is that weird conversation connection thing that 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 gets them what um what do you think is the uh I, I, we, we beginning to touch on this earlier but what do you think last time you've come off stage and you were a little bit maybe shaken by your performance you're like oh geez i that was just i, I totally spaced or whatever it is right. where you know you have those i think they're more in the beginning of your career i'm sure so that's hopefully, a med- hopefully so it's a twofold thing right um you know one is the shaken thing for me isn't like if i bomb i bomb it's fine uh but a lot of it is that it's that adrenaline that i'm pumping afterwards needs an outlet and so the first outlet it grabs is spiral into uh self-esteem because i i as i don't want to have an ego so I won't allow myself to spiral into being egotistical. I won't allow myself to walk off and go, I'm the fucking greatest guy in the world because I know where that leads. It leads to confidence. It's fake and making yourself look like an asshole. So I'll take that energy and point it into, I suck. And so the next 20 minutes will be being like, I fucking hate this. This is what that worked. And, but I don't consider that shaken. Like that doesn't shake me, but I will spiral after shows. Uh, if they go like not great. Um, but that doesn't, that's just like, that's just who I am. It's every show I will have some kind of, any mostly headlining show will have some kind of that where the energy is up. Um, but the last time I would like actually spiraled was, was recently doing a show during COVID that was like not really a show. And I was out of practice and I did a bit. Um, it was like a race type bit, but I'd never said it out loud before. And I got off that stage and I was like, that came off like I was a real racist. You know, that bit didn't, the bit was about, um, and I'll just tell you what the bit was about because I, I just I think it'll make more sense. Uh, the bit was about are you no comic books at all or comic book movies? I'm not really whatever. Mm-hmm. So in Avengers Endgame, there is this moment where all of the women get together and they're like women and they do this power pose. And I had this epiphany the other day. Now that we're kind of getting out of Trump, I go, we're gonna look back at this time and go, and you're gonna look at all the art that was created in the past four years and be like, they were going through something, right? Because the idea that they have this moment in Avengers where it's just a commercial for women, right? That's not a real 
thing you know like i don't know right. you're not you're not in a war zone and then all the females get together and go like here we are like that that's not a real thing that was clearly put in there to do this girl power thing in response to what's happening in society is that everyone really is feeling like abused and sexism and all this stuff is whether it's real or not it there's definitely this uh I'm not saying it isn't or isn't. See, this is where it starts to get very, where I feel like I kind of sound like a racist or a sexist. Whereas I felt like that is, um, I feel like a lot of these movies are now doing that in response to kind of what's happening in society. And so I was trying to do that joke, but I think the way it came off was I was like, I mean, why do we have these women in Avengers, right? And I <laughs> got off and a comedian goes, yeah, man, that's because we fought for that kind of thing. And I was like, like he thought the whole bit was about me not being into diversity. And I was like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying to have a nuanced, art, uh, a nuanced point on, it's not, not about diversity. It's, it's about this like clear shoehorning of uh, political, you know, point, like not political points, but like, you know, showing your Issues. better than people. Right. right. And it's, and it's that, um, you know, Disney doesn't give a shit about diversity. Disney gives a shit about money. And so they're like, well, we can get some money by doing this. And we don't ever get that shit twisted, right? Like no one in corporate America gives a shit about social issues. They give a shit about who they can get by manipulating these social issues, right? Adidas doing Black Lives Matter isn't because they give a shit, unfortunately. Maybe there are people who do also give a shit. And I'm sure there's a ton of people who work there that do give a shit. But the person making the choice is saying, this does link up with us getting money somehow, right? right? And I, I mean, maybe I'm, uh, you know, an asshole thinking that, but the reality is, I think, is it like, that's their, their first point in business is money first. And because if it wasn't, they would fall. And because their right. job has to be money first. Um, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be Disney. They wouldn't be right. Adidas. You know? Exactly. So a lot of their reactions were people wanting that in response to what was, what's kind of going on right now. But what I said on stage was, why are all these black people in movies? But that's, like, that's not what I meant. It just came off. It came off that way because I, I hadn't done the bit before. And that I spiraled because it was that, like, there was a ton of comedians I respect around. And I was like, oh, my God, am I, like, did that come off racist? And then part of me was like, is this a racist bit? Is this opinion wrong? Like, am I looking at this the wrong way? Am I? Like, so that's the stuff I'll spiral on because it will question what I know about a topic that I've been thinking about and, and whether or not that's like, you know, every, I think every white guy is, is partly afraid of being a proud boy or a racist. You know, there's a little bit of you that's like, am I racist? Like, you know, that's right. it always the fight there. So those are the things I spiral about. I hope that answered your question. I, 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 I that, that, that definitely over. answered the question. And it, and it leads me to sort of a, I think it's a question that's been asked a lot. And it's a conversation that has, it's like, you know, at what point do you have to give the comedian the benefit of the doubt that they're working something out? You know, where if you're the audience member, you're the other comics, you go, oh, this is obviously brand new. It's so funny because I say 100% of the time you have to. That being said, I've watched a million comedians say some shit and I went, oh, fuck this guy, he's a racist. <laughs> you right, know, or yeah. like, you know, and I'm like, but... I do trust the fact that like, um, let's wait till it gets on TV, right? Like I didn't like the Chappelle thing. Did you see the Unforgiven Chappelle yeah. thing? Mm -hmm. I, not that I didn't like it, but I was like, first of all, it was masterful storytelling. And if, if your listeners haven't heard, he kind of went on and just talked about how, why he would side with, uh, you know, how he wanted Comedy Central to, um, how he didn't get, he wasn't getting enough money for the Chappelle show. Right. And so he was telling everyone on Netflix to stop uh, to not watch it on Netflix. And what made me annoyed about that whole thing was that he made a comment that was like, yeah, this is why I like Netflix because Netflix took it off. This is why I don't like, and I'm like, Netflix doesn't give a shit about you. Netflix knows that you're going to be giving them money for their new specials. You're not that stupid. You're not that stupid to think that Netflix gives a shit about Dave Chappelle's feelings. Right. You know that Dave Netflix gives a shit about you continuing to do specials with them. Um, and so I was like, I was like, this is this um, makes me mad because he put it out right it was recorded and it's it wasn't he didn't run that idea by people who would call him out on it and i think that's why you have to have friends around you who will call you out and test you on your material and be like i mean anthony who you just had said before like my best friend he will i'll be like what do you think of this and he'll go here's 
three or four reasons on why on some loopholes you may run into that and take them or don't, you know, um, right. Like I seen like Godfrey go up and he said something about like, this is why all white people suck or something. And I was like, yeah, man, you need a bigger laugh at the end of whatever this joke is or else you're just spewing crazy shit. And, you know, I've seen him do it a few times. So I'm like, okay, after the third or fourth time that you're realizing this joke isn't, you know, it's just, uh, not that it's offensive, but it's like, it's not funny enough for the attack, right? right. It's gotta be, it's, and, and I'm fine with attacking, you know, I'm fine with, I'm fine with approaching in, in different angles, but it's gotta have a point in, even if it's a dumb point, right? Not just that, it can't just be the first thing you thought of. Again, I think I had too much coffee. You asked a question. Now I'm just saying wild things that I don't know if they're lining up with a question you asked. But that's no, I that's that, that's. I think it's good. I mean, this is the conversation. It's about it's that it starts with a bad show or a bad moment or a, whatever it is, and it goes from there. And it's interesting because you see, for me at least, I made the mistake when I was starting out. Maybe you made it too, where you are trying to hit all these different things. You go, am I, am I like this on stage? Am I like that on stage? Should I be more political? Should I be more opinionated? Should I be more aggressive? Should I be more laid back? And I have made the, the mistake where I go up and I go, I will do, I'll just say something that is going to be so shocking or so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just going to cut my line in the sand so deeply. But like you said, the laugh has to validate your insane statement right. and you know some people just never grow out of that right you know some people just live in that frame yes. and they go well if stan hope can do it you know i guess i'll do it too there was that style of comedy which was which patrice was known for and then everyone tried to rip it off and like you see these guys do it and it's say a wild thing then justify it Right. So you go something, you, the comedian comes down and he goes, rape is good. And then people go, what? And then they go, because what are we but animal? You know, and then they come in, you know, they come in with this wild idea of a thing, but only a, a, like a Bill Burr kind of is from that. But you justify it in a way that makes sense. And you go, man, that is crazy. But I see what you're fucking coming from on this other plane. And there's so many comedians that just wouldn't do that thing. They'd come out and they go, rape is good. And they would go, because women is wanting it anyway, right? And then you're like, dude, do you hear what you're saying? Like, that is not good. It's like, not that it's not good, but it's also like, not a, here's the thing too that, that gets me is it like, it's not an original thought too, right? right? They'll say this wild thing and it's like, okay, but you need to give me an original thought that's a funny take and interesting and all that shit. And they'll just come out and they'll just say shit and you go, it's got to be original. And it's got to be funny. That's all I care about comedy. Two rules. Original, funny. If it's not original, if it's not funny. I don't know. You know, I, I don't care what you say. Uh, as long as it's original and it's funny. Um, like I saw, I remember like 20 years ago, I saw a comedian come out and he just went, man, why do all white people smell like baloney? And I had never heard that before. And it was just a dumb line that this, this guy said, and I started dying. And I was like, yeah, it's, I don't know what, there's something about it just made me laugh. And I went, yeah, I mean, you're saying I smell like baloney. I don't smell like, it's not true. It's whatever, but it's like fucking funny. And I never heard someone, it's not a great take, but it's just a thing I never heard anyone ever say before. Um, and so like, I was fine with it. But if someone just comes up and goes, yo, I hate white people. Then you go like, all right, but, wh but why in a funny way? <laughs> you know, right, like, right, why yeah. in a funny way? I don't care what you think or what you believe. You can believe tons of crazy shit. Look at Nick DiPaolo. That guy is a legit fucking like, racist. But if you let me live, your, I don't care who you are, but let me see through your eyes for 45 minutes in a very fun way. And it, it's kind of a fun adventure to see through other people's eyes for that 45 minutes. And I don't want them to be like me. I want them to have crazy different thoughts, but it's still got to be entertaining, funny. And I still have to know at your core, you're a good person. If that makes sense. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's what we lost a lot with Louis C.K. is that it was the question whether or not we had trusted Louis so much. And when that shit came out, people were like, I don't know if he's a good person. So it's hard for me to, to trust him now, if that makes sense. Whether or not he, yeah, I'm not taking a stance on anything he did. I'm just saying like, right. that's what shook the stilts, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, it's, you know, so much I think of comedy is building this, leading it back to kind of where we started is building this conversation, building this relationship 
with the audience where they feel like they know you. And mm -hmm. when that thing in their mind of who you are is challenged or deceived or, or um, contradicted, it's, they feel almost like we don't know you anymore. That, that was not an authentic experience. You right. know? Absolutely. And, and that's what they want. That's what we want. I think too, as comics is mm -hmm. to be authentic with an audience, you know? I always tell new comics this advice, and it could be wrong. Uh, I do believe comedy needs to be the number one thing you're doing on stage. But when learning to do comedy, I always say before funny, be likable and be interesting. Because if you are funny, but you're not likable, you're not funny. And if you're not funny, and you're not interesting, what are you doing? You're just wasting people's time. So I'm always like, if you could be f likable first and then interesting, worst case scenario, because funny is the hardest part. If you're not funny, at least you're interesting. At least you didn't waste my time watching you. Um, and if you're not, and you have to be likable or else nothing you say, do I give a shit or want to hear? So it's like, those are the things you, and I always say, just do karaoke, just do karaoke for years and just get like stage presence and get a little bit of that. Um, but anyway, those are the things I kind of believe that I don't, it's like the Greg school of thought. So it might not be the right school of thought. It might just right. lead you into being me. Uh, yeah, right. You know, you don't want a million people being you. But yeah, that's what I kind of believe.